biggest things I focus on is helping people to get back to a place of hope. Hope. The Morning Show Worth Talking About. Faith at Work with Yvette Gavin. Hello and welcome to Faith at Work. I'm your host, Yvette Gavin. Have you ever had a friend stand up for you? Do you know someone who always have a kind word for others? What about someone who helped and supported you even before you became friends? In Acts 4.36, the Bible talks about a person like that and refers to him as an encourager. The given name of Barnabas was Joseph, but the apostles gave him the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement or son of exhortation. Can you imagine being so encouraging to others that Christ followers would choose a new name to call you? Being full of the Holy Spirit, Barnabas seemed to excel at encouragement and exhortation. You can learn more about this story in Acts 11. I relate to Barnabas because I am very passionate about speaking on faith and speaking faith into the lives of others, encouraging others, doing tough times and calling forth seeds of greatness that is planted on the inside of others. Assuring others that their best days are ahead of them is something I personally enjoy doing. When the opportunity came for me to join Kern Cherry, co-founder of the powerful Success Women Conference and other authors in the anthology, Make It Happen, I had to make it happen. There are over 30 authors in the book, Make It Happen, and I am delighted to be one of the authors. And I know you will be inspired into action when you meet these authors and hear a little bit more about their stories of making it happen. If you truly believe it's your time of favor, it's your time to make it happen, then I want you to stick around because after this very short break, I'm talking to authors of the anthology, Make It Happen. The perfect way to start your day. Family, traffic, meetings, traffic, family, all can be stressors in our everyday lives, but spending a few minutes with God can prepare you to take on the world. The Faith at Work devotional is a perfect vehicle to do just that by helping you center on what's most important, your relationship with God. And now, for your donation of any amount, you'll receive a copy of the Faith at Work devotional. Just visit our website at www.faithatwork.tv. Welcome back, everyone. Like I said before the break, I know you will be inspired into action when you meet these authors and hear a little bit more about their stories of making it happen. So I'm not gonna keep talking because I want you to meet these amazing people. And let's get started with Ms. Kern Sherry. So I'm Kern Sherry. Uh, I'm the visionary author behind Make It Happen. I'm also uh, the co-founder and director of Success Women's Conference. Uh, and I am so excited that there are over 30 of us sharing our story in Make It Happen. Yes. So Kern didn't tell you guys, she also is known as... The butts in the seat queen. Yes. That is true. <laughs> I didn't know how much you wanted me to tell. Well, I am known as the butts in the seat queen. Mm -hmm. I am the uh, also founder and director of Level Up. Level Up uh, Summit, Power Up Summit. I also have another number one best-selling book, Trailblazers Who Lead, and you'll hear uh, Trailblazers Who Lead Too is also coming out as well. I am the uh, co-owner of PR in Home Care, which I've been, uh, that's been in business almost 24 years, and uh, I've been in the healthcare field for over 30 plus years. I've been creating events, for almost 20 years as well. So uh, as I said before, I'm so excited to be a part here and be here with Yvette. So thank you for having us on. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm happy to do this. So Jonathan, would you introduce yourself? Yes, hello everyone. My name is Jonathan Haynes. I'm a gospel award-winning recording artist and a serial entrepreneur. I'm owner and CEO of Jonathan Haynes Ministries, Songbird Productions, 
JH Consulting. I have a new clothing line out and much more, but I'm so grateful to be a part of this anthology, make it happen with my sisters. I'm the only male on here, so I'm just so excited to be a part. And Jean? Hey Amen. Thank you so much, Yvette. I am Jean Turner. I'm a registered nurse and holistic health nurse coach, the CEO of Spirit of a Warrior Enterprises, LLC, author, a podcast, and radio host of Health Chat with Coach Jean Show. Awesome. Love it. Hi, everyone. I am Felice Kelly Gillum. I am an entrepreneur and also the executive director for USO Gulf Coast. We provide services to our service members and their families. Um, and it's just a wonderful opportunity to be a part of this project with so many amazing people. Yes, it really is. And you know, I shared last week that I'm also a part of this project and it really is an amazing opportunity for each of us to be able to share our stories in such you know, a powerful way with so many other powerful, um, what I say, authors. So Kern, would you share with us just a little bit about what your story is? I don't want you to tell it all, of course, because we want people to buy this book so they can really hold it and meditate on these messages that, that are in the book. But just give us a little tease about your story. So many people, uh, most people know that I'm all about uh, uh, making things happen. That's kind of what I do. Uh, I love uh, creating things and seeing the need and seeing the opportunity uh, to bring something forward. So I've done that with the uh, Success Women's Conference uh, done that with the Power Up and the Level Up Conference. And I just believe that part of the things that you'll see from my, my story is that, that I, my take on it from as a whole is that I needed to show that you can make things happen. Uh, this book that, that has come about, uh, you know, came about because God gave it to me to do. You know, I really uh, have ne never done uh, book anthologies were not in my uh, agenda, so to speak, as far as what I thought my calling was. And so you'll see through my story that, you know, um, that that was something God had put on me. He's called out for me to do. And I talk about uh, the transition from from uh, always. And you'll hear me say all the time, I'm not a writer. But I think God has called me into this for a reason, and that's to help other people share the story. Yes. And I think also one of the things that this book does is show people that they have a story within them that is worthy of sharing and that other people can be blessed by these stories. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I think really and truly, uh, we're, we're just in a time frame that, um, you know, you have more time than you normally you know, think you would have. Yeah. And it actually has shined light on the fact that you you can create, you can create something. There are gifts inside of you that you probably aren't using. And so these stories allow you to share some of the things that you have done, that you have brought into fruition uh, using your gifts and want to inspire other people from our cohort to share the things that they have done. And so I just believe if you have an opportunity every year, and I do believe you do have the opportunity, but uh, every year you should probably be in at least two to three anthologies. Uh, so I'm hoping it inspires people to do just that. Yes, and I'm sure it will. So Jonathan, tell us a little bit about your story. Yes. Well, my story in the book is about me overcoming suicide and depression. I tried to commit suicide three times after the passing of my father. He had a brain aneurysm. And so I was making straight A's. I was doing all these things. But when that happened, something in my life changed. And I knew it was the enemy that was trying to take over me. And so by 14, 18 and 20, I tried to commit suicide three times. And God told me and I hear this. He said, your year and your months is coming. And so I kept the faith and kept striving 
And now as I look over my life, I knew it was always true. And so now I'm, I have a standing in the gap movement where I'm helping youth and I'm helping people older than me. I'm only 25 years old where they feel like giving up from suicide, depression, and I'm trying to start up a home. I'm in prepares getting a home where people can come and feel safe and talk about these things in life. So my book, uh, my chapter in the book is about me going from overcoming suicide and depression and it's going by step and step. Uh, I actually poured of how I tried to and how I overcame and dealt with it in those times. Yes, I, I'm listening to you and I'm just hearing, and I know this, uh, Kern has said, this was part of her inspiration with this title, but the scripture where the word says, when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. And I'm, you know, I'm listening to your story and I just hear that just bubbling up in my spirit. He will make it happen. And that indeed he, he is doing and has done in your life. Awesome. I look forward to reading all these stories. But Jean, will you share with us a little bit about what your story is about? Yes. Um, so my story in the anthology is about a young woman, myself, who went from being the perfect picture of health to chemo in zero to five seconds when I was di suddenly diagnosed with a malignant tumor in my, in my lung. And so you know, it, it's about resilience. It's about that innate inborn strength that God places within each and every one of us to overcome uh, whether it be disease, whatever type of adversity it is but to overcome that. And we know that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Yes. And so, yes, it is all, it's all about how to overcome whether it be bad or cancer diagnosis or whatever the adversity is that we can overcome because he places in us that resiliency, that inborn strength um, to overcome any obstacle that comes our way. Oh, I can't wait to read this story. Awesome. And I keep, and I'm listening to you and I keep thinking about where we are right now too in our society with COVID. And there's been so many, you know, so much adversities are going on and how we really need to know how to be resilient and what that really means. So I definitely look forward to reading the fullness of your story. Well, Felicia, you know I want to know what your story is about, but the guys are telling me it's time for a break. So don't you guys go anywhere because I want to hear this, your story, and I know the audience wants to hear it as well. So after this break, we're going to come back and we want to hear from you about what your story in Make It Happen is all about. Okay. So guys, don't you go anywhere either because we're coming back right after this quick break because I know there's so much more that we have to share with you and we wanna hear Felicia's story. COVID-19 has changed the way leaders engage teams and it has caused teammates to shift how they communicate. Effective communication is more important today than ever to a team's growth and overall success. The John Maxwell Leadership Game, implemented by Yvette Gavin Consulting, can help you lead your team into more effective leadership and communication practices. Schedule your workshop today. Call us at 424-262-2462 or email us at yvette at yvettegavin.com. Executive presence has nothing to do with skill and talent. Executive presence is a measure of image. Welcome back everyone. We're here talking to the authors of Make It Happen. And Felicia was just about to share with us a little bit about her story in the book. So my story is really dedicated to finding that own your own light within yourself um, to learn how to make it happen. I think God instills a, a perfect light in all of us um, to be able to manifest itself and to do the work that he has for us. But so many times uh, in life, we get distracted by other things. And every time I face some type of obstacle, I find uh, when it was something that I felt was overwhelming, 
a part of that light diminishes. And sometimes you just have to have the right amount of faith within yourself and with God to know how to bring yourself back to the light. So that's what my chapter is all about. Just knowing yourself well enough, knowing your God well enough to be able to bring yourself back to the light so that you can make it happen to fulfill your purpose that God has for you. Yes. Amen. So will you just share maybe just one way a person could understand who they really are and who they were created to be? I think um, one is intuition. God has given that to us all. Many of us, if we think back on our lives to who we are, who we were as children, a lot of who we are today and feeling the completeness of the circle of who we were supposed to be, we knew very early on in life. So I think that um, being transparent and being honest with yourself is really the best way to be uh, the person that God will have you to evolve to be. You have to be able to know yourself and be honest with yourself and be honest with the world. Yeah, yeah I, I hear you being honest, you know, with yourself and to yourself is very important. So Kern and, and everyone, when you think about your story that God has put in your heart to share in this book, what is the one thing do you want readers to walk away with? Well, for me, I feel like I want to make sure that people understand if you if you would just take the time, spend some time in quietness or or just talk to God, you right? You know, and ask him what he's called you to do. You know, I think a lot of times the 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 failure that we sometimes have in faith is that we allow fear to overtake anything we're doing, right? right. And so instead of us sitting quietly, and uh, this is what I did in 2019, I sat quietly after the conference success and uh, God just showed me. He said, you know, basically he showed me it's a little bit, it's okay to be what we sometimes call selfish. You know, what you're basically doing is focusing, right? So that your faith will shine so that other people can see that your faith in God is allowing you to walk in your blessing and in your calling. Proverbs 18, 16 says, when you walk, when you uh, work your gifts or walk in your gifts, the world will make room for you. Now that's not an exact quote, but that is exactly what it's saying. You are able to prosper off of your natural born gifts, your talents. So I encourage people to take time to spend some time with God so that you can find your calling and allow your faith to be demonstrated right now as the world has been flattened by the global uh, the global transformation. We're all online. So that's my take. Who else would like to share what one point you would want someone, a reader, to take away from your story? I would like, I would like the reader to take away from my story. You know, when we're going through adversity, a lot of times we think that is punishment. But I would like the reader to take away uh, from my story that it's not punishment, it is process. And it's just God propelling you into your God-ordained purpose and destiny. Yes. So that's what I hope the reader takes from my story. Yes, that's powerful right there. It's not punishment, it's a process to get you to where God always intended for you to be is what I was hearing you say. Yes, very powerful. And I want to tell people all the time, no matter what you go through or the faces or the trials you go through, you can make it. No matter what comes your way or the obstacle, you can make it. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So I want you to know that anything that's put in your way, you can make it and you can make it happen. Amen. Yes. Very good. I think what I would want for the reader to take away most is to realize that within them is a story um, and by hearing and listening and absorbing our stories they can reach and find that inner purpose for themselves because one thing that i have definitely noticed 
is that every time that I don't share my story, it halts my process. I can't move on to my next level of development of who God wants me to be. I sometimes recreate the same mistake over and over and over until I get to the point to where I share that blessing and that story with the next person. So that's one thing that I would want for them to do is recognize that there's a story in you and you have to be bold and brave enough to tell it. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, this show is all about encouraging people to really activate what the word says in the book of James, where it says that faith without works is dead. So share with me a time when you've had to actually apply work to your faith. And that's for anyone who would like to would like to answer that. Uh, I, I would say. Um, uh, for me, uh, it, I'm sure that's been several times, uh, uh, being in business 24, almost 24 years now, especially in the home care field, uh, I have seen some serious up and down. And I would say, um, I talk about, you know, being where I, we, we live here in Mississippi, you know, we've been hit by Hurricane Katrina. And this all, when I think about the fact that we all endured uh, Katrina, the housing crisis, the uh, crash of the market in 2008, and then here comes the BP all spill. You know, it, it's, it's quite a bit when you find yourself like, okay, I am in recovery mode, and this was 2010, and thinking that, wow, we're zooming. I always tell people that was like the best start of a year that we ever had in our business. And then by the time the oil spill hit, hit, and a few months later, I watched most of my business disappear. Not just my business, but every part from, you know, rental and, and uh, just the clients uh, dying and all this stuff. Lots and lots of money uh, just completely gone to where by the end of the year, you know, I was looking inside myself and I was thinking, Lord, you know, is, is this where we're supposed to be, you know, and it, you know, you start to wonder, I know I've been doing it by years by now, but it's just a doubt comes in your mind, a hesitation comes in your mind and you start to wonder. And so God got us through that. Uh, and he always does. I always tell people pay your tithe and offering. So you never be dependent on the world ever. Okay. And so uh, he got us through that. I look back at that year, uh, which extended into a couple of years after. Um, and it made me realize that I was struggling. Yeah, I was struggling. You know, a lot of times you don't know when you're slightly depressed mm -hmm. or you're, you know, really trying to figure out, is this where you're called to be? But it is what we're called to be. And we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't have survived 24 years. So, so make sure that you get, you know, uh, I know you're supposed to pray all the time and we all go up and down, but make sure that you spend time with him. Yes. And that's how you get your faith up. Yes. Spending time with the Lord. Amen. Yes. Staying in his presence. Awesome. So, Jean, I think you were going to share something, a, a time where you've had to really apply work to your faith. Well, when I was going through that, that cancer diagnosis and treatment, in order for me to continue to build my brand and work my brand and, 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 and utilize the gifts that God placed in me, you know, in a time that I was sick from the treatments and everything that was going on, that was definitely faith in action. And during that time, God had me to terminate the very business that I had just started earlier that year. But, you know, fast forward to now, even now, my faith is at work because when he tells me to do, I'm moving at that time. I, and and I, he, has, he has rebirthed. I, like, I'm in a rebirth right now, okay? So where now my business has been reborn, Spirit of Warrior Life Prizes, and I'm just, he's made, he, he's just opened up all these doors and all these opportunities. Why? Because I put my faith to work. I pressed on, I pushed forward, 
you know, and went full steam ahead. So yeah, faith at work, most definitely. I'm probably one of the queens amongst my fellow co-authors who had to put their faith to work. Well, guys, thank you so much, Jean, for sharing that. I cannot believe our time has ran out already. But before we go, I want people to know how to reach each of you so they can connect, connect with you. So, Jonathan, will you share with people how they can reach you? Sure. I'm on all social media uh, websites. My website is JonathanLHaines.com. I'm on Facebook as Jonathan Haynes. Uh, Instagram, J.H., um, J. Haynes Songbird, Twitter, John L. Haynes, LinkedIn, Jonathan Haynes. But if you want to get in contact with me right away, go to JonathanLHaynes.com. Perfect. Thank you. And Jane, will you share? Yes. Um, feel free to reach out to me at www.spiritofawarrior.life. And I'm also on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. Uh, under my uh, nurse coach, so nurse coach Jean, or um, health chat with coach Jean, which is my um, radio and podcast show. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Felicia, how can people reach you? Uh, like many others, I can be reached on all social media platforms uh, under my name, Felice Kelly Gillum, and also on my website, www.felicekellygillum.com. And Kern. And, uh, and I am uh, Kern Cherry. So you can reach me at kerncherry.com. That's where you can find stuff about Make It Happen as well. Uh, you can also, uh, for those of you looking to speak right now, time to make it time to level up. That is the conference that is being promoted right now. Kern Cherry, Kern Crockett Cherry on most platforms especially Clubhouse and LinkedIn. Those are my top favorites right now. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, uh, you name it, TikTok, Instagram, all that. I'm there. So currentcherry.com. You can find mostly everything about me there. Yes. Well, guys, thank each of you so much. It's been such a pleasure having this conversation with you about the anthology, Make It Happen. And I personally cannot wait to read the fullness of each of your stories. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this talk as much as I have today. It's been an amazing time just listening to just a little bit of each of their stories. So I want you to go ahead right now and pinned, make it happen, because this is a book you're gonna wanna read. Well, I'm your girl, Yvette Gavin, here along with authors from the book, Make It Happen, reminding you that faith, faith without, without work is, is dead. dead.